Okay, thank you for the confirmation. So let us start the free webinar. So I'm Chris here, founder and CEO of Trade Masters, and I would formally like to welcome you all for the first Trade Masters free webinar session. So this particular session will be for 45 minutes, and at the end, we'll be having a question and answer session. So hold on to your doubts. Whatever doubts you're getting in the middle of the session, you can just hold on to it or make a note of it in a piece of paper. And you can shoot your doubts during the question and answers, and I'll be happy to respond. Okay, so let's get started. So as you see, like we actually gave a Google form out. So a lot of responses were filled in. So uh, I couldn't exactly take all those particular topics in a 45 minute session. So we have split those topics. Let me just put on to a laser pointer. We have split those topics into seven different segments and the dates for those topics is mentioned over here so you can just make a screenshot of it or this particular uh, training details will be posted in our public group okay and you can just uh, this particular uh, webinar link also will be sent later on for these individual topics you can just join on those particular dates and you can just uh, gain some knowledge okay so today we'll be covering the basics of stock market topic. Okay, so without any so without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with the simple and the most basic question. What is a stock? Right. So this is the first and basic question that comes to everybody's mind. What exactly is a stock? So if you purchase a stock, the major criteria what you're looking is you're taking a ownership in a publicly traded company okay so a stock is ownership in a publicly traded company so your next question will come what are the benefits of owning a stock okay you're, you're taking a stock you're buying a stock from the stock market so what exactly are you expecting out of the stock what exactly is the return that the stock gives you in turn okay so the first and most basic return is you will be having a claim to the company's assets and earnings. So let's split it down with an example. Okay. So for example, suppose uh, you're buying five shares of a company named ABC. This particular company has 100 shares in the market and you're buying five shares. Okay. So if you're buying five shares, you're owning it's equivalent to owning 5% of the company's stock, 5% uh, of the company. Okay, in, in other words, you have ownership of 5% of the company's assets and earnings. So that is the basic reason for buying the stock and that is the basic criteria for them. Okay, so coming down to the next question, how exactly does owning a stock pay out? I mean, everybody is entering into the market to make some profits, right? What exactly uh, is the profit that you're looking for? How is a profit? How are you able to make profit in the market? Okay, so the first and foremost uh, principle is like uh, your let's uh, split it down with a similar example. You're owning this. Uh, you're buying a stock ABC at hundred rupees per share. Okay. And uh, suppose you're buying uh, ABC stock today at 100 rupees per share. So you're buying five shares. So your investment will be 500 rupees. Okay. And one year later, that particular stock price rises all the way up to 150 rupees. So per share, your profit would be 50 rupees. Right. And if you're cashing out at the end of one year, your total profit will be 250 rupees. So that is the in investment increase in investment of your base value. So this is one type of payout and the next type of payout is dividends. So if a company, if a well-performing company, if you're investing in a well-performing company, that company gives a annual dividend payout to its shareholders. It, it is a form of faithful relationship. Okay. They, these guys give annual dividend payouts to their stakeholders and uh, this particular will be in some form of percentage. It depends upon the profit scenario of that particular company during that particular uh, year. Okay. And the third one is bonus shares. So the bonus shares is pretty rare. Like it doesn't occur every now and then. It occurs maybe some once in every seven years or once in every 10 years, depending upon the company's management. 
So we'll be looking into a detail about these dividend payouts and bonus shares in the next slides. Okay. So what exactly is a dividend payout? Yeah. Yeah. Dividend payout is basically a reward for the shareholders uh, uh, in the particular company. Basically, they are just sharing their profits uh, to the shareholders in the form of good trust and to be for being loyal to the company for so many years. That is exactly a dividend payout. And this particular dividend payout will happen somewhere between June to September. OK, and the criteria for owning uh, for receiving this dividend payout is like you should hold that particular uh, stocks for at least one year. Like, for example, if uh, Reliance is giving a dividend payout in June of uh, 2020, okay, and if you have already owned, uh, if you have just bought a share in March or April 2020, you are not entitled for a dividend. You will be entitled for a dividend if you hold those shares for the next year. You will be entitled for the 2021 year dividend, okay. The minimum criteria is you should hold that particular stock for at least one year in order to get a dividend payout. Next, what is a bonus? So bonus is additional uh, free floating shares in the market, okay? And the management will give those uh, free floating shares to its uh, shareholders, already existing shareholders to encourage them. It's a form of good faith as well. So this particular bonus will not happen uh, year to year. Okay, it, it, it is a sort of a rare phenomenon, okay? It happens uh, every seven years or five years or 10 years. It depends upon entirely upon the management, so on the company's management. Okay, now it's a little bit of tricky, I understand, but we'll get into, we'll split it down with a little bit of more examples so that it will be easier for you guys to understand what exactly is a dividend and what exactly is a bonus and how exactly you'll be profitable if you own a stock for a longer period of time, okay? So let's take an example one. We'll take Reliance over here. This is a live example, okay? So suppose you bought Reliance, 100 shares of Reliance in the year 2000. So if you go back uh, to the year 2000, Reliance was trading somewhere between 80 to 100 rupees. So let's just take like uh, Reliance is trading somewhere around 100 rupees and you bought 100 shares for 100 rupees. So your total investment would be 10,000. Okay, in the year 2000. By the year 2021, so that's almost like 20 years from uh, then, your total profit would be 10 lakhs. So with an investment of 10,000, your total profit would be 10 lakhs. If you ask me, that's a pretty good return, right? Over a span of 20 years. And if you invest uh, 1 lakh over here, so your profit would be 1 crore, right? It's a pretty good return. So let's split it down. Furthermore, so that you'll be able to understand it a bit more clearly. Okay, so this is a dividend and bonus chart for Reliance. Okay, so if you see over here, the first year, Reliance is giving a dividend of 4.3 rupees per share. And you have bought 100 shares in the year 2000. So the next year, you're eligible for the dividend. Okay. So 100 shares into 4.3 is 430 rupees. So by the end of uh, 2001, your total profit would be 430 rupees. Okay, excluding the price movement of Reliance. Okay, so if you calculate these particular uh, dividend shares over a long period of time, over a period of 20 years, you will be getting a total payout of 33,285. So your investment is 10,000 and your dividend payout is 33,000. So that is almost like three times your initial investment. So you have taken out your uh, actual investment uh, money and you have made two times the profit. Okay. So this is a dividend ratio. Now let's come to bonus. Reliance has given a one is to one bonus ratio in the year 2009 and in the year 2017. Okay, and if you want to be eligible for bonus is the same criteria as well. You need to hold the share for at least one year if you want to be eligible for the bonus criteria. I mean, we don't know exactly when Reliance will be giving the bonus. So it will be a long shot in that case. So you bought a share, 100 shares of Reliance in the year 2000 and you kept on holding it till the year 2009. 
and reliance management is uh, awarding your loyalty with and reliance is uh, awarding your loyalty with uh, one is to one bonus okay so by the end of the year 2009 your you will be owning 200 shares of reliance and again at 2017 freelance is giving one is to one bonus again so this 200 shares will be doubled again so 400 and at the end of year 2020 you will be having 400 shares of reliance you initially started with 100 and reliance is giving you bonus for your loyalty for holding the share for a longer period of time and at the end of 2020 that is 20 years from 2000 you'll be having you'll be owning 400 shares of reliance okay so this is how bonus and dividends work so at the end at the end of 20 years your dividend would be 33285 rupees that is almost three times your initial investment and the stock price from the year 2000 it reached almost all the way up to 2369 rupees so that is 23 times uh, increase from the initial value okay so basically if you want to split it up the stock is doubling each year so this is your uh, money making more money sign up and the third one is reliance is giving a bonus for two times okay and the total increment in your initial investment would be 10000 percentage okay so now coming back uh, you'll be having a question how exactly would i know like reliance will be reaching this particular reliance will be giving this much dividends and it will be reaching this much uh, price in the future years right so that is exactly where fundamental analysis takes place okay so nobody knows the year 2000 that reliance would be reaching all the way up to 2316 no retail trader would be able to predict that but the fundamental analysts they'll be looking into the corporate actions they'll be looking deeper into the corporate scenarios and when they think that reliance has a capability of going this far they'll be investing small small quantities in the year 20 years ago so 20 years ago if you are investing one lakh it's not a big issue but at the, the, that particular one lakh if it grows all the way up to one crore in the year 2021 it's a pretty good return right so we'll be looking up into fundamental analysis in the later parts of the webinar okay right now we're just concentrating on the basics of stock market so what exactly is the stock market and how exactly you will be getting a payout and the bonus and everything so we'll be looking at that in this particular webinar so coming to the next one what are the types of markets okay so all over the world if you see there are only two types of markets one is a primary market and another one is a secondary market okay so what exactly is a primary market so primary market is a is a market space where the stocks are actually created so in other words it will be listed as ipo right if a if a private company is being listed first time uh, to be traded into a public sector in a publicly traded domain okay these primary companies will be released as ipos into the market okay and these ipos will primarily be traded in this primary market and after all the shares are consumed then later they'll be moving on to the secondary market where the total action takes place okay so who plays who plays a major role in this primary market right so the major majority of the primary market participants will be long-term investors okay none of the retail traders or uh, none of the professional guys will be uh, working on the primary markets because we basically want to trade based on technical analysis and since this particular stock is being traded for the first time there won't be a history not much of history to be traded only the fundamental analysis guys will be trading in the primary market they'll do a detailed background research of how the stock is performed how this particular company is performing whether it's a value-added company or whether it's a liability okay all these uh, criteria they'll be taking into consideration and after that they'll come to a conclusion yes this particular company is a good value addition and in the future this part particular company will be performing well and it'll go to certain heights so these things are derived from fundamental analysis and fundamental analysis is basically used for long-term investing okay so the majority of the participants in primary market would be long-term investors and some in institutional players as well okay so moving on to the secondary market so secondary market 
this is exactly where the majority of the action takes place okay so in other words uh, this is where the trading takes place okay so uh, this is where the institutions investors professionals or retail traders everybody trades and makes profits or losses in share okay so once the particular company is listed in the ipo and it's getting traded in the primary market the next step is for the company to move into the secondary market when it comes into the secondary market all the retail traders all the all the other traders will start trading in this particular company and the company's uh, uh, share price will keep on moving or decreasing accordingly okay so secondary market is the actual stock market where the trading is taking place so exchanges okay there are only three major exchanges in india and the first one will be the oldest one in asia bombay stock exchange so basically bombay stock exchange was the oldest exchange in asia as of date it was founded somewhere in the year 1800s 1875 i think to be precise and uh, this bombay stock exchange is majorly owned by the stock brokers and some institutionals okay and the second one will be nse so the nse is called as a national stock exchange this particular uh, NSE is uh, popular among the retail traders as well as professionals and NSE is majorly owned by the banks okay and basically NSE is created to have a transparency to have a transparency in the Indian stock market and the third one will be commodity exchange so this is where all the commodity transactions like uh, gold uh, uh, the precious metals like gold silver lead copper zinc and if you want to go into uh, oil and gas like uh, we have natural gas and we have crude oil so all these uh, mcx the commodities uh, trading will be done within the commodity exchange okay so now uh, you might have a question since we already have a bombay stock exchange and it's almost the oldest stock exchange in india why do we need another stock exchange called as nse right so uh, let's uh, move back to the year 1990 and before so if you want to buy a stock in 1990 what exactly will you do you need to visit an authorized stock broker you need to get the quotation from him and he'll be giving you a bond you'll be paying your money for the bond uh, that you're the, for the stocks that you're buying it so how exactly can you determine that particular value in the bond is exactly traded price of that stock in that particular time right so this is why in bsc the stock brokers manipulate the market okay so when all the national banks and other big big institutions came into india they wanted to have a transparency because a bombay stock exchange the stock brokers are manipulating the market anything they wanted to have a transparency that, so that is why all the banks combined together they formed a national stock exchange okay so that is why nse was formed in the year 1992 or 1995 i think 1992 i think yeah so nse was formed in the year 1992 and it is uh, majorly owned by the banks and it was majorly formed to have a transparency in the indian stock market okay no more manipulation by the brokers no more manipulation by any other uh, institutions it will be completely transparent and as i said the third one will be commodities exchange so commodities exchange is only for the commodity tradings like uh, gold natural gas and silver and uh, the timings for uh, bse and nse will be nine o'clock to 3 30 okay from 9 to 9 15 uh, it is purely uh, only for the institutional players to move their uh, stocks or uh, if any pending order is uh, left out in the from the previous day that particular pending orders will get executed between the uh, time 9 to 9 15 you won't be able to place any new orders or any new uh, uh, levels into your terminal within the, the time period from 9 to 9 15 okay the actual trading will start from 9 15 till 3 30. okay so coming out to the next one index so index in the sense is like uh, there are only two majorly traded index in india so one is nifty 50 so everybody knows nifty 50 popularly called as nifty 
and another one is bank nifty so what exactly is nifty 50 right so nifty 50 is basically a combination of the india's uh, top 50 companies okay so we have almost like 14 to 15 sectors and the top companies in all those sectors will be uh, uh, picked out based on the free floating uh, market capitalization and that particular companies will be li uh, listed into nifty 50 so this is the weightage for nifty 50 companies as of now so the major weightage uh, in right now 36.51 is for financial services and, and these are the uh, different sectors uh, that are form a combination of the nifty 50 companies now if you want to have if you want to know uh, detailed uh, knowledge of uh, each and every 50 each and every stock in the nifty 50 how exactly weightage uh, it's uh, deriving you can just visit this nsc website you can just type in nifty 50 weightage so you can find those details over here so these are the fine financial sorry these are the sectors that are comprised of the nifty 50 companies the, so, so the financial services right now have 38 percentage weightage and over on the right hand side you can see what company owns what weightage in nifty 50. for example you can see over here hdfc bank has 10.29 percentage weightage in other words you can just correlate it like this uh, each and every single point move in hdfc nifty will move by 10 points each and every single point movement reliance nifty will move by 10 points okay you can just correlate the market movement based on the movement of these uh, top weightage companies i'll give an example so that you can you guys can understand understand it more clearly um before the crash before the Mar march uh, 2020 crash if you see nifty was making new lifetime highs okay and it was trading somewhere in the range of 12,300 to 12,400, I believe, at the time. And if you just look at the charts of Nifty 50 companies charts, you can see that majority of the stocks were not moving. Either it were it was on the downside or it was not moving at all. It was in a stand, standstill. But still, Nifty was making new lifetime highs uh, going 50, 100 points every single day. If you look at the charts more carefully, Reliance was making new lifetime highs during those time. Okay, from the month of January till March, Reliance was making new lifetime highs, and that is exactly why Nifty was making new lifetime high as well. So Reliance was the only company that was moving with the uptrend. It was completely manipulated. It was completely moving on the uptrend, and as a result, even though all the other companies were uh, in a standstill or going down, Nifty was making new lifetime highs. Okay. So this cannot be considered as a healthy bull market. It's a manipulated market. I like to call it as a bubble. Okay, so you can just uh, segregate a, a healthy bull market from a bubble market based on these uh, simple criteria. You just need to be open. You just need to open your eyes and look at the market in a simple perspective. Okay, now let's get back to the training. So this is a weightage of India's Nifty 50 companies segment wise. And then moving on to the next one, we have Bank Nifty. As the name itself suggests, Bank Nifty is the weighted average of India's largest banks. Okay, so as of now, this is the percentage weightage of Bank Nifty. So HDFC uh, is having the most weightage in Bank Nifty. It's having a 35 percentage. In other words, if uh, HGFC moves by one point up, Bank Nifty will move by 35 points up. Okay, so based on these uh, bank stocks movement, the movement of Bank Nifty will be calculated or will be according to the stocks movement. Okay, so th that's it about Bank Nifty as well. And uh, Nifty 50 and the Bank Nifty are the majorly traded index in India. But there are also a lot number of indexes. So these are some of the examples of other indexes. We have Sensex, we have Next Nifty 50, we have Nifty 100, 200, Nifty 500, Nifty Bank, and Nifty Auto. 
Okay, so these are some of the other stocks that are majorly traded. But if you see out of 100, 60 to 70 people will trade in Nifty 50 and Bank 50. Okay, so the proportion is majorly more towards Nifty 50 and Bank 50. Okay, so coming out to the next part, the types of markets. Okay. So we have only two types of markets worldwide. One is called the bull market and the other one is bear market. Okay. And you can, can and as the name suggests itself, the bull market is like the economy is going very good. Okay. And all the stock prices are, are rising up. So one important thing what you need to understand in a bull market from a healthy bull market is like you need to identify like uh, let's take an example with Nifty 50 itself. So Nifty 50 suggests like it is a combination of India's top 50 stocks. Okay, out of those 50 stocks, 30 to 35 should be in the uptrend. So that is a direction or a symbol for a healthy bull market. Okay, and if 30 to 35 stocks are in downtrend and still the market is moving in upside because of the 10 stocks that are kept keep on moving up, it is not a sign for a healthy bull market. It is a sign for a manipulated market. Okay. So if you can just go back to January 2020 to March 2020, you can see like the that was not a healthy bull market. It was a manipulated market. Okay, so trading in that particular market is highly risky for retail traders and our suggestion would be to stay away from those sorts of markets. And the next one is bearish market. So bearish market as you can see for the last four to five days it was completely in a recession it was in a bearish mode okay but the actual trend is still in an uptrend it is just a correction so the correction also can be considered a, as a short-term bearish market so we have two types of uh, uh, this one differences within the bearish as well as in the bullish market we have a short-term bullish market and we have a long-term bullish market uh, same as in the bearish market also we have a short-term bearish market and we have a long-term bearish market Okay, so right now, what Nifty is facing is a short-term bearish market. So as soon as Nifty takes a support at one of our particular levels, Nifty will start reversing and it has a possibility of reaching an all new time high of 16,000. Okay, so this these things will be uh, discussed in detail uh, during the later parts of the webinar, like not today, and during the next, uh, when we cover up the next topics. So just understand the basic concept of what is a bearish market and what is a bullish market, what exactly is a healthy bullish market and what exactly is a healthy bearish market, okay? Now, the next question or the majorly uh, major question that comes into everybody's mind is, how are the prices moved in a stock market, right? So sometimes you can see the price is uh, shooting uh, 20, 30 points up or even 100 points up in some stocks uh, worth of 1000 rupees, right? How exactly is the price is moved? So the majority of the market prices is moved by the institutional investors. Okay, so coming to institutional investors, let me just uh, give a recap of uh, a clear explanation of what are the types of traders in uh, Indian stock market or uh, worldwide stock markets. This is a common uh, scenario and it can be considered for uh, the markets around the world. Okay. There are four types of traders. The first one is foreign institutional investors. So foreign institutional investors are basically hedge companies or investing companies that are located abroad. Okay, so these guys collect a lot of money from their resident civilians or these guys own uh, some part of the government. The government funds uh, their uh, transactions and these guys invest those funds into other equities market all around the world. Okay, so these guys are called as foreign institutional investors. And the next we have is domestic institutional investors. So these guys, as the name suggests, it's a domestic one like these guys will be located in India and these guys will be trading from India. Okay, uh, there are a lot of uh, domestic institutional investors like we have a, a lot of hedge companies in India as well. 
and uh, a lot of bank sectors also like if you take hdfc bank they have a separate unit uh, for investing in stocks itself and uh, one more category that comes within this uh, in institutional investors itself is a mutual fund like a lot of companies have started right now like access bank hdfc icici these guys have a lot of mutual funds uh, this one so basically those things are also called as uh, uh, investor institutional investors so combined they can be uh, combined they can be represented as a domestic institutional investor okay and the third one is a professional traders so what exactly is the difference between fii dia and the professional trader okay so the basic difference is the amount of capital each guy has if you consider between if you consider between foreign institutional investors and domestic institutional institutional investors foreign institutional investors capital will always be higher because these guys are backed up by their government the government lends their funds uh, to these uh, investing companies to make more money okay the domestic institutional investors uh, basically it's a group of guys or a small company that has a capital of more than 1 lakh uh, 50000 to 1 lakh crore okay and these guys manipulate the market by uh, increasing or decreasing the prices and the third one is the professional traders the professional traders have the knowledge equivalent to fii's and dii's okay but these guys have the knowledge but they lack the fund for example let's say like uh, if a guy has a uh, complete knowledge about the share market like he knows when exactly the price is going to go up and when exactly the price is going going to come down okay but he has a trading capital of only 2 to 3 crores he can't make a major change in the price of or a particular uh, stock uh, with those 2 to 3 crores okay so these guys are called as professional traders because they have the abundant knowledge but their trading capital is very very less and the fourth one is retail traders so retail traders basically how they are categorized is like these guys have no knowledge or little knowledge about how the stock market reacts they have little knowledge about technical analysis and the funds are also limited so to sum it all up the job of these three guys to simply put it is to mint money from the retail traders that is exactly what stock market is so that is exactly why i ask most of my premium clients or most of my uh, members uh, publicly following members to learn technical analysis so that they can avoid certain scenarios like this when exactly to exit when exactly to book profit so that exactly will be taught up in technical analysis class in the later sessions so coming to the final topic of this so stock market is a vast ocean okay and uh, these this particular transaction in stock market has to be regulated by someone right so uh, let's take a normal life scenario as well in normal life scenario we have uh, a lot of rowdies or we have a lot of crimes taking place so these crimes are kept into kept in check by police right so that is exactly what sebi is doing over here sebi is basically you know sebi is basically called as security exchange board of india uh, but i would like to call sebi as a police of stock market so that you can understand easily right so sebi is basically the police of stock market sebi was formed to basically regulate the capital indian capital market okay and majority of role of sebi is to monitor and protect the interest of the investors like their majority of the job uh, is to ensure that uh, the institutions are not or some brokers are not manipulating the market in such a way that like, uh, the retail traders are uh, getting uh, mixed up and making huge huge losses so the bottom line scenario of sebi is to include some regulation some rules so that it can protect the retail traders from being uh, uh, masked by the market so that is exactly what the, the rules and uh, the rules and regulations of sebi is all about so sebi is a friend to the retail traders if you see in the actual scenario okay yep so that is it about the basics of stock market webinar and in the next webinar
So we covered the basics of stock market today. And in the next webinar, which we'll, we'll be conducting on 7th of February. So we'll be covering the cash and futures and options market. And later on, we'll be covering the candle types and so on. Okay, so this particular training dates will be posted in our public channel. So you don't have to take a screenshot or make a note on of it or anything. Okay, and once you complete all the seven days of training, I guarantee you uh, from the trader you are now, you'll be at least 30 to 40 percentage better when you complete these seven trainings. Okay, so that concludes the training for today and I'll be open to take any questions 